Hey everyone, it's Ali Lundi here from One Number, and today I want to talk to you about something that is very close to my heart, which is how to build a beautiful dashboard. So if you have finished your dashboard, but you're not happy with how it looks and you want to turn it around, here are my five tips to uh, that I would apply to any dashboard if I had an hour to try and sort it out. So hopefully it's helpful for you. There is one overarching tip that I want to say before I just walk you through my five things that I would check off. And that is when you're trying to build nice dashboards, you need to find your style. And partly what that means is you need to have like a repository in your mind of what a good dashboard looks like. And I don't know if a lot of us spend much time looking at great dashboards and figuring out what we like about them. So here's how I would do it, right? Like when I'm trying to work on my style, this is exactly my process. I would go to Tableau Public, where amazing Tableau developers are posting and publishing their dashboards. And I just find some that look nice to me. And I just open them up. So like this one, Angela, 21 ways to visualize time in Tableau. I think it's pretty cool. And what I would do is download this dashboard and take a look at the way that she's put all these worksheets together and analyze the UI elements. Now, the key question that I'm trying to ask is, why do I like what this dashboard looks like? So for me, I, I haven't built a dashboard like this. And there are a couple of things that I don't know that I'd use. I don't love this font necessarily. Um, I don't know that I love this combination of red, blue, and gray, but I still think the borders are very cool. I like how minimal this is. I like the way she's put these charts together. It's very cool. I, I like those things. So I'm taking what I like, leaving what I don't like because I'm trying to build my style. Uh, or here's a second dashboard. Like this is also a very cool dashboard by Chimdi. And there are some elements that I really like. I think these are cool, like regional comparisons, uh, the same charts, but for multiple regions, very nice. Like this is the kind of thing that I would say, hmm, I want to keep that in the bank because when I'm trying to build a dashboard that looks like that, I could pull out some of these tools, right? That's not saying, oh, I'm just going to crib his work. It's saying I'm learning from this uh, and I'm putting together an idea of what a great dashboard looks like. So this is my way of trying to, you know, build up my understanding of what, how I would want to build a dashboard. So download it, see how he's done it. Um, and then over time, you'll build up your style. Now, if you actually had to take notes, if you're a note taker, what would you take note of? I would say the fonts. What font do they use? Like this is not a standard Tableau. This is not the standard, you know, Tableau, bold or whatever it is. So take note of that. What is it? Look at the colors, the exact colors. Find the hex code or the RGBs or whatever. Look at the grid lines in the worksheets. Are there a lot of grid lines or few grid lines? Are there borders on this dashboard? Notice there are actually no, no borders on this dashboard. So how does it still feel segmented? Look at the size of the titles, the sizes of the fonts. Look at the placement of the filters, right? How are all those working together to build a beautiful dashboard? Make note of those things. And then over time, when you need to build a dashboard in the future, you'll be better equipped to know what you like and how you can sort of implement that style. However, if you're thinking, look, I just need five things. Help me work this out. I don't have time to go and find my style. Well, here is my style. Right. And I'm happy to share this with you. I'll talk you through it briefly and feel free to fire away any questions in the comments below. But these are sort of five checks that I would apply to any dashboard to try and take it from a dashboard that doesn't look so great to a dashboard that does look great. The first thing is use your colors wisely. And that would be use your use colors in the same palette. Now, you're not just trying to choose colors that are cool and each one is cool, but they don't necessarily work together. So how do you find colors that work together? Well, if you're not limited to a brand palette, uh, then I would use a website like Coolers, uh, which is very cool. Like you can just generate a palette and now I press space and it'll generate a new palette. Like these all work together. And what I'm thinking as I'm looking at this color palette is what is the accent color going to be? Uh, and how do I find secondary colors to complement the accent color? Okay, so accent color would be something that you're using to draw my attention to. So that's very helpful. The second thing is that if you are constrained to a brand color palette, often some brands don't let you use any colors outside of the palette. Some brands want you to use the accent colors and then you can use complementary colors like grays as neutrals, etc., etc. You can still use coolers to generate that palette 
by changing this color over here with the hex code. So that can, that can be a really powerful tool. The other thing I want to point out here about colors is that you can use the same color in different hues to give the impression of multiple colors. So for instance, this dashboard looks like we have eight colors. We have gray and white, and then we have dark orange and light orange, and the same for blue and green. However, we only have three. We've got, well, we have five. We have the orange, blue, and green, and white and gray. So the way this orange is working, for instance, is we've picked our orange, and it's actually the same for 2024 and 2023. However, we've just played with opacity. So here, this line is at 100%. So that's the true orange. And then if we look at the area chart, you'll notice the opacity is down at 22%. So it just gives the impression of a lighter orange. You could technically like color pick this 22% orange and save it, save the hex code or the RGB so you can use it later. That would be totally fine. But the idea then is you've got this very consistent play of the hues. Uh, I like working with pastels as a starting point and then normally add a little bit of saturation if I feel like it, but that's a nice thing to start with. Other thing that I wanted to say on colors is that um, I often see people choosing an accent color and then like a neutral color or a back, like a secondary color that doesn't work with the accent color. I try and keep my secondary colors extremely neutral. So here you can see our secondary color is one of the lightest grays ta that Tableau offers by default. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is say, yeah, yeah, all I want to do is draw your attention to the accent, which is here, right there, there, there. Whereas these little regions, we've sold so little, I'm just implementing it. the lightest, lightest gray. Of course, I could add a region border, but I just, I took it away. Maybe it's too little, but I, I, you know, I like it. I think it's super clean. So that would be my recommendation for your neutral color. Keep it very neutral. Um, rather too little than too much, I think, because we get overwhelmed visually when looking at dashboards that have a lot going on. The second thing is use borders cleverly. Now you'll notice on this dashboard, I actually don't have borders. You know, I haven't clicked on any of these worksheets and added a border, but there are borders in this worksheet. So there are a couple of ways that we've done that. The first thing is that each worksheet has a background color of white, but the dashboard itself, if we go to dashboard and format, has a background color of this sort of off white color. I think it's this one. Now, what that does is it simulates a border without actually having a dark, you know, sort of black border around each of these worksheets. And I think it's a nice, clean way of differentiating between these just enough visual contrast to show what the border is. However, you can do this with multiple worksheets, not just one. So these maps are single worksheets. But these KPIs are three worksheets, but they share one border, giving our end users the impression that they are a synchronized or collected unit of worksheets. So how would you do that? Well, let's click on one of these charts like the KPI, and then I would double click on the little tab and you can see, okay, we've got a horizontal container with those two sheets in the donut chart and the KPIs then double click again. And now you can see we're in a big uh, vertical container. So we've got a individual worksheets in a horizontal container and then in a vertical container. Fantastic. Okay. So far, so good. That, um, that, what is this container itself has a white background. So that would be the same as the worksheets. And then the dashboard has the other color. Okay. So you can play around with that, but that would certainly be something. Use your back backgrounds and borders well. That's my rule number two. Number three, titles and fonts should be consistent and interesting, but not boring. So we can think cleverly about the way we're using titles and fonts. So something you might've heard uh, people talk about is bands, big aggregated numbers. So take a look at this one. My sales amount is really big, but my actual measure name is quite small. Uh, same as the you know, uh, percentage change indicator. Those are quite small. So I'm trying to draw your attention towards the most important things. Now you'll notice my dashboard here doesn't actually have a title. That's okay. 
you don't need a dashboard title on everyone. But if I was presenting this to someone, I probably added it. Now you got to be clever about how you do that. It's got to fit in with the vibe, you know, of the dashboard. The second thing is not every worksheet needs a massive title. And I often see this is something that overwhelms me with getting client dashboards is that we often have dashboard titles that are like size 22, 24 fonts, when actually we don't need that necessarily. What's the most important thing? Well, here by indicating the same colors and this uh, sales text, you know, right up at the top, you know, this is sales, you know, this is sales. And you're sort of putting the pieces together as you go down. However, our region sales is almost like a subtitle, you know, so it's small. And if I double click on it, you'll see it's only size 10 font, which I think works, you know, so it's, a, it's not overwhelming. But as you zoom in visually into this region sales map, you can see what's going on. Okay. So for smaller titles or subtitles, you can actually keep the font size quite small and they don't need to be super huge. Tip number four is remove unnecessary lines and elements. Now, this is definitely something that I like, and I know some people don't like this, but I did say these are my five things that I'd apply to any dashboard. So remove unnecessary lines and elements. I like a minimalistic, clean dashboard. So you can see for a lot of these, like for our line chart, I've removed our y-axis, right? I've removed all our grid lines, all our axis lines, all our axis ticks. Why? Well, because I don't really need you to see the exact number right now. If you wanted to see it, you can interact with it and you can take a look at the tooltip. And this tooltip could be nicer, but it does the job, right? Um, now I would say be guided by your chart type. For instance, if we flick back to this worksheet here, uh, which one? This one you'll notice what Chimney's done with these scatter plots is I should imagine that he didn't necessarily want these, you know, the, the tick marks all the way through, but you need some kind of perspective with a scatter plot like over here. So we've got grid lines for these scatter plots, but not for this scatter plot. We just have the axis, but it's very minimal. Now, when we go back to my charts, you can see, well, we don't have any access lines here. It's super minimal. I don't think you need them. With this one, our segment sales versus previous year average, I've got a label in here that kind of takes the place of the axis. So those values are in there. And then there is a reference line, which you know gives you a, a line to reference, I guess. Be guided by your charts, but, uh, but I remove a lot of those. So my normal checklist is grid lines. I would probably look at removing axis ticks any axes, actually borders of worksheets, anything else that you don't think is necessary, like here, state names and region borders and things. I just took them out. And if there are points that you want to highlight, highlight them using either here, like a text KPI uh, or labels, use your labels well, highlight individual points on plots, on charts if you want, um, but rather remove, I think less is more, but you don't want the focus to move off of what's really important. So it, it is a tight rope. You do have to use your discretion to make sure that you're not giving your end users nothing, right? It's still going to be useful, but um, let's not overwhelm them. The fifth thing that I would check uh, is be consistent with your design elements. Now, before I say this one, I, I do just want to point out that we often work with clients who have dashboards that are working, but they're just not up to scratch visually. And we would, we'd love to help you. That could be anything from like a one hour session. Let's sit together, brainstorm a couple of changes you can make, do one or two small things, and then you're off to the races. Or it could be a couple of hours, a project of us revamping a, a tired dashboard, making it look really nice. We can do that. We'd love to help you. You can book an office hour with us in the description. Or if you just want to come and learn how to do this and a whole bunch of Tableau, uh, functionality, sets, LODs, parameters, advanced calculations. Why not come and take a course with us? We have a fully loaded schedule for the summer. We'd love to do that. Okay, so this last one, be consistent with your design elements, is one that's easy to get wrong, because especially when you're working between dashboards. Something that I would recommend is make a note, like literally, I, I don't know if you use like a notes app or if you prefer physical writing, but I would say use your notes. 
Now, what should you make note of? Well, what elements have you removed in general? So for instance, if you've removed in bar charts, you've removed your axis, your grid lines, and your headers or whatever, make a note of that so that your bar charts are consistent across your dashboards. You can also make a note of font sizes, your actual fonts that you use. If you use two different fonts for a heading and a subheading, make a note of that. Uh, text titles, you know, font, um, yeah, title colors, you want to make a note of that. Like I would need to make a note of this particular color for the percentage change indication. And I would need to make sure that I know what the red would be that would correspond to the green, you know? So if things dip down, do I have a good red that makes sense in light of this? Or is it like some dull red that doesn't really fit in? You wanna make sure that you've noted all of those. If you've removed borders from charts, write that down. If you've used the short name for dates, write that down. Use the same font, size, color, etc., for titles, tooltips, and labels. You can um, make that easy for yourself by going to format workbook and you can change a whole bunch of these fonts over here. So you can change the font, the size and the color for a lot of these. Play around with it, you'll get used to it and see how it works. Now, my number one piece of advice is find your style, find what works. This is what's working for me at the moment. I'm sure it's gonna change over time as we build more stuff. But if you have questions about this, you're trying to apply it, you're welcome to pop me an email with a screenshot if you want, or add a comment down below, and we'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. All right, hopefully this is helpful. Building great looking dashboards is a huge part of what makes a dashboard impactful to our end users, especially if they're not super technical people. Uh, it can be a really nice way of interacting with the data, right? If it's, if it's good looking. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have questions, let us know, but otherwise we'll see you next time.